beat the rest. Yeah, that was like to apologize in advance for the terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger actors which could throw into this podcast. How are you going? Yeah, good. I don't think I've had as much tea as you have, from the sounds of it. I'm always up to my leader. <laughs> my leader of black tea. God, is it always black tea? Today it is. Oh my god, I mm. can't can't even get my tongue <laughs> to operate at this point. <laughs> <laughs> You've had so much black tea that you no longer can talk. CIA man, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be doing you're going to be doing quotes <laughs> with a, with a list. <laughs> What's the matter, Theo? Got you pushing too many pencils? Get down! Get to the chopper! Get to the chopper, guys! <laughs> I was surprised by this movie. In many ways. I gotta say, I was regretting my decision. I, I think this would be something I'd show to my kids. Oh, that's good to hear. I think it's about a father's love for his child. Oh, absolutely, yes. And uh, a complete stranger's love for that man's child. He wore really <laughs> ugly outfits. <laughs> you know, puke yellow, prom night, pale blue, you know. Uh, I don't even know <laughs> yeah. where to start Definitely with this film. Definitely not a movie I would consider watching unless you tell me to. Hello, I'm Derek. And I'm Peter. And this is The Mog. In this podcast, one of us suggests a beloved movie for the other to watch. And then we talk about it. What made us laugh? What made us cry? And whether it explains our feelings of inadequacy as alpha males. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, what movie today is the movie tonight? We have Predator from 1987. I've got two titles for this. Oh, nice. Um, I've got insert catchphrase here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the slow strip tease of Rookie McCrabface. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. very crab-like. He actually slowly takes off everything. <laughs> but we'll go back to that. Yeah. Sorry, what was yours? I had Predator, not a film about Bill Cosby. <laughs> 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 but anyway, I'll start with the synopsis. I've got something to tell you <laughs> about movies. <laughs> A rescue special forces team led by the tough but fair Major Dutch Schaefer are ordered to assist CIA man Dylan to rescue survivors of a helicopter shot down over the remote jungles of South America. Not long after they land... Dutch and his team discover that they have been sent under false pretenses. This turns out to be the least of their worries when they find themselves being methodically hunted by something not of this world. So, background for this film. Uh, it was released in 1987, um, starring Arnold Bumping Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger! Oh my yeah. gosh. And directed by John McTiernan. Who um, wrote Die Hard and Die Hard with a Vengeance and Hunt for Red October? Some really awesome films. And, and Last Action I'm... Hero. Yeah, yeah, which uh, a lot of people said was crap, but I actually found pretty good. Man, and Die Hard, that's like gold. Yeah, Die Hard's just, it's, that is a mog. That is definitely <laughs> a mog. But, so this um, is your film. I haven't seen this in its entirety. Mm, yeah, so. Um, John McTiernan, I was looking up his filmography and I saw he hadn't made any films for ages and I was like, what's going on? And it turns out that he went to jail. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he went to prison in 2013, but he was like charged with crimes from 2006 for uh, like illegal tapping of phones of producers and his ex-wife. Oh, my God. <laughs> And um, and because of all of the legal battles that he went through, so that was like what seven years of legal battles. Um, he went bankrupt. Oh no! Wow. Yeah, he was also under a five million dollar claim for liability in an automobile accident. Oh gosh. So yeah, this. So apart from being a director of some of the most classic '80s films of all time. He also went to jail. Yeah, so his life go. sort of fell apart. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's no good. Is he out? Uh, yeah, he, I, I believe he's out now. He got out in 2014. It was only it was for 12 months, 328 days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's got to make a prison film now, a prison break film. <laughs> <laughs> With Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> My life and crime. <laughs> But um, yeah, so this was there's um, this is 1987, the year of Beverly Hills Cop two, and 
uh, Inner Space, and there was a lot of going on in this year. Princess Bride, Good Morning Vietnam. Oh, Princess Bride. Robocop. Oh, it was a good year. I was in grade yeah. one in this year. That's a good year. That is a really good year. Wow. Just um, Princess Bride alone. <laughs> yeah, that's a both of us mug. Um, <laughs> yeah. But Cher won Best Actress this year. Oh, really? In Moonstruck. Oh, right. Moonstruck. I haven't seen that film. Um, but it ha- doesn't that have um, uh, Nicolas Cage? Yeah, Nick, uh, young Nick Cage. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it either. It's got me intrigued. <laughs> but this um, Predator, it actually was nominated for Best Special Effects, Best Visual Effects, but it lost out to Inner Space. Oh, right. I actually reckon that the special effects in this are, are, are were really fantastic. Good. Hey, really? Yeah. 1987. Yeah. Just some of the, particularly um, the practical effects. Um, not just the special effects of like the invisibility and also the explosions and all of yeah. that. Just all of the practical effects in this were really, really good. And I've got some crazy trivia about that. They actually tried a monkey in a red special effects suit <laughs> to get shots of the predator swinging from trees, but the monkey <laughs> just kept taking off the suit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it was originally uh, John Claude Van Damme was originally classed as the Predator. Oh, God. That's awesome. <laughs> and firstly, he wasn't going to be a very good comparison to Schwarzenegger um, in terms of size. And um, he kept passing out in the suit. So I don't blame the monkey at all. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but yeah, Kevin Peter Hall was the Predator. Yeah. Just huge dude. Wow. But did you know that this was inspired by a joke about the movie Rocky running out of earthly opponents <laughs> and moving on to aliens? And all he's got left to fight is E.T. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that maybe that's why it was originally a smaller alien that was more ninja style. Ninja style, yeah. But apparently JCVD, he was, he was like in it. When he runs at the dude... You know, the hole in the jungle scene, that was actually him. Runs at the hole in the jungle scene, which scene's that? Oh, when the predator first appears and then the woman says, oh, there was a hole in the jungle. And then that was, apparently that was actually J- Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, right. And then, I... he, and then he quit. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so for that little bit, he was ninja-like. <laughs> oh, right. Wow. So I didn't actually realize that um, he actually did appear in the film. Yeah. He didn't just uh, but, was yeah. part of it. And then he was passed out. So, <laughs> But yeah, and like there's some cool stuff about this where like all the night st- shots were shot at night and, you know, Arnie was covered in clay and he was he was shivering the whole time. and Oh, really? And he just was drinking schnapps to keep warm, but he just got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's how that's how they managed to get him with such a great pair of lungs at the at the end when he screams into the forest. Oh, it's all the schnapps. Oh. I'm out of schnapps. <laughs> he kept asking him to say the lines, kill me on here, and he was just going, Give me more schnapps. <laughs> But the cast, they also trained together on location with weapons and military training at 6 a.m. every day. Oh, nice. It's, it's just, yeah, you can feel the masculinity uh, <laughs> from that. This, this is testosterone fueled from start <laughs> to finish. Like it, like the, the scene at the beginning where they clasp, you know, they clasp hands and do the, the arm wrestling is literally like a embodiment of the entire film it's just glorious but um <laughs> did you know there's gonna be a new one this year every release is it i i don't know anything about it all i've heard is it's called the predator and the guy mm. who directed it shane black he was hawkins in the original film all oh, right <laughs> but um he's like the scriptwriter for lethal weapon so and kiss kiss bang bang and all this stuff oh so, right wow but um he was hawkins in the first one so it'll be a comedy then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it's got like more women it's got like olivia munn and uh yvonne stravonsky i'm a big fan of her so i wonder how that will be but I guess we should get on to how this film touched you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it touched many men in many uh, <laughs> over the years. Um, I, I think there's a real swath of um, male society who watched this film and it's been just a source of endless uh, quotes um, yeah. 
just so many quotes that you can't. In fact, when I was taking the notes for this, I had uh, CP every time a quote would come up, which is a catchphrase. Oh, um, yeah. Because there's just so many of them. There I wanted are, to make really, sure hey. I got them. Yeah, I almost, yeah. Um, but this movie, uh, I don't, uh, it first was, it played at our house, but I don't think at first I was allowed to watch it. So I would hear all the gunfire and the sounds and uh, and um, the scary bits and all of that stuff going on. Oh, that's and torturous. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, oh, well, I think I was, you know, when I thought a movie was too scary, it was just like, okay, I'm going to my room and I'm, oh. and I'm just going to do something else. But play um, violent video games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I would have been, uh, maybe. Uh, I must have been in in uh, just preteen, just preteen. Uh, um, so playing violent video games. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Prince of Persia. You know, uh, that type of thing. <laughs> but um, in half. But once I did start watching this, this was a brother film. This is what my brother loves. This film. Oh wow! Cool. He's obsessed with this film. In fact, I remember when he was living in Sydney. Um, I came down and he had a movie showing and we did the drinking game with Predator. Oh, wow. Uh, and it was schnapps as well. <laughs> oh, it was schnapps. <laughs> so, so Austrian of you. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I think I was pretty sick. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I think there was a lot of drunk people. Yeah. Actually, I got the flu as well. Oh, so, gosh. Mm. Yeah. So this is a real movie that I have a connection with my brother with um, because he's more obsessed yeah. with this than I am. Now I have to ask you, um, there's 40 men and one woman in this and also in Forbidden Planet, there was 40 men and one woman. 40 <laughs> men? 40? Oh, like all the all the rebels, all the, you know, the bad guys included. I don't know if that really counts though because in the 80s, all, all bad guys had to be male <laughs> because... <laughs> You, you couldn't shoot up a whole row of female uh, yeah. bad guys. Like, can you imagine him walking into the hut, you know, and going, knock, knock, and then just mowing down a series of females with machine it's guns. It's definitely of that era. Yeah. But, uh, there's but, a pattern forming here. Uh, <laughs> so you were a Smurfs fan, weren't you? A sm- <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stand the Smurfs, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, you. Well, I mean, I'll have to go back and look at my list again. Um, <laughs> but I mean, a lot of the movies of the eighties were very male dominated and very yeah. testosterone fueled. Like particularly the actions. Yeah. Uh, not all of them. Uh, I think it kind of started to change in the nineties. But um, yeah, a lot of the eighties very, very much uh, on the um, the male leads. Yeah, absolutely. But um, th- something that I found interesting about this film was that there weren't too, there wasn't too much on the ethnic stereotyping. I don't know. You could tell me if I'm off here, but I mean, you've got two two African American uh, actors in this who aren't playing any type of generic african-american actor well the native american guy was pretty pigeonholed he was the tracker that's true poncho yeah. <laughs> he, he was even called poncho so i guess <laughs> <laughs> i actually to be honest when i started to say that <laughs> i had to shy away from that because i realized as soon as i was saying that there wasn't as much stereotyping that yeah they had a Native American playing a Native American <laughs> stereotype. So the stoic, not talking much, you know, uh, yeah. connection with the environment. So, yeah, that's true. But the African Americans were, in fact, uh, they definitely weren't playing basketball or no. like that in this. <laughs> So, so I guess that's one positive. Um, but, but the Mac guy, um, he was so black, though. <laughs> Inky black. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, yeah, I guess, I guess so. But I mean, so was Schwarzenegger at some points in this film. You could see <laughs> yeah. his eyeballs coming through yeah, the yeah. mud. But I thought that that uh, Mac character was was hilarious. Yeah, he's great and awesome. He he, just these characters made the show. So um, really, my background, the main thing about this is just that it's a, it's kind of like a bro movie. Yeah. Um, that you can watch with other guys who sort of watched it around the same time as you and everyone knows the quotes and everyone can re-quote them and everyone does their bad Arnold Schwarzenegger accents and um, 
So yeah, I I may or may not do some bad Arnold Schwarzenegger accents during this, and I wish <laughs> wish to apologize. I'm, in I'm advance. a massive Arnie fan, uh, and I remember watching Total Recall with the commentary of Arnie with you. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I use him as a human shield. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually went and saw Terminator 2 Judgment Day uh, last year in the cinema when they re-released oh, it in wow. 3D. It was so perfect, man. I was in tears. It's such a perfect <laughs> film. There's something about this era of this action films. And yeah, him, the man. action heroes in this. The I don't. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I, I wrote further down as we as we get into it, but I'll, I'll bring it up now. I had a question for you, which was. How do they make these characters so watchable when they are such douches? <laughs> douches in what way? Well, they're all... It's it's all so male, alpha male, I know everything, sort of, you know, you listen to me and you listen good. Oh, yeah. Uh, everyone's got... The, everyone's right. But yeah, there's something about it. Is it sort of the that bro team thing it's where they're working together as a team oh definitely yeah it's the male bonding yeah um, <laughs> but it's also the implied history i felt i wrote down oh, you know yeah. they've all got this really thick sort of backstory but they just sort of hint at it you know i missed this and he goes you never were that smart <laughs> <laughs> dylan you know yeah um, yeah and there's a there's another nice nice line where um <laughs> And he says, it's like coming. What? <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> I think we should get into the acts. <laughs> I was literally waiting for one of the quotes that I know. And you had to pull, you had to pull a pumping one out of me. <laughs> pumping iron. <laughs> oh, God. You so, make, act one. Yeah. <laughs> what was yours? Dylan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> or, or what do you call a donkey who bodybuilds? Asteroid. <laughs> Asteroid. <laughs> oh, man, you didn't even get that right. <laughs> Sorry, you go. Asteroids. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, um... My I only had one which was the hunters are the hunters. Oh yeah, yeah. And now we get on to the incredible music by Alan Silvestri, who is Back to the Future. Did you recognize it? Oh, oh look, it's his music is instantly memorable. Yeah, but it's, straight away it was like I could totally yeah. hear Back to the Future. He does that stuff with the strings, makes that I don't yeah, know. Yeah, with the flute them. and the yeah. yeah. But also, I didn't know that he did Forrest Gump and Castaway too. Oh, wow. Silvestri. So yeah. is it, he has a tie to um, Tom Hanks as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, the music was great. I thought. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it really helps to make this film and build the tension. I mean, there really isn't a great deal of script in this, so I think all the other elements have to work for it to actually be a good film. Yeah. And this is a good film. Um, I have often rated it as a B-grade film, but it's hard to call this a B-grade film when I've watched other B-grade films. Mm. Uh, What's an example of another B-grade? Robocop. Oh, I haven't watched that. That's on my list, I think. It should be on What's both of our list. Well, Plan 9 from Outer Space is another B-grade film, mm. but that's more D-grade. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the worst movie of all time, from what I hear. But uh, I guess when I think of B grade films, I often think of uh, it's so bad it's funny. the The effects aren't always that great. The, there are things about the movie that are unintentionally hilarious that make it a B grade film. Oh yeah. But this, the catchphrases are made as catchphrases. Mm. The you know like uh, you're hit, you're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Oh, that is such a great line, man. I you got I, time to duck? <laughs> <laughs> that is so ballsy, that line. I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah, as, so good. As muscle. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> but you know that stick around line before that? Apparently that was Arnie improvised that line where he stabs the guy <laughs> and then stick around. I can believe that, but you you can see the smile on his face when he says it like, <laughs> you know, this was mine. <laughs> <laughs> But I often forget about the ship at the beginning of this film. Yeah, I made note of that, yeah. It actually starts in space. 
which is kind of good in a way because when you think about it, there's sort of one tone to the entire film, which is jungle. Mm. So it's good that it sets it outside in space where there's, you know, very complete different setting of the film, different vibe. And then it drops. Once it, you drop into the jungle, you drop into the jungle. Yeah. Um, and there's choppers, no less. It's very Vietnam. Oh, yeah. You know, they're playing the 50s music with Little Richard and um, Long Tall Sally from 1956. You yeah. Know, two choppers slowly, slowly flying through the jungle. It's very Apocalypse Now. Yeah, it is. It, someone needs to go back and do a tally of the number of times they say chopper in this film <laughs> it's like get the chopper but it's not just that like that's the one everyone knows but they just talk about choppers yeah. the whole way through <laughs> yeah i didn't notice yeah. that oh and they're everywhere yeah helicopters and choppers <laughs> down choppers flying choppers pickup choppers do you think there was some sort of backlash about the vietnam war in this film look i will admit that i have not nor have i ever tried to interpret this film in any political context I sort of got the vibe that the screenwriters were trying to sort of strip down, you know, all of Arnie's weapons and his tools and make him this sort of, you know, he's got to build his own bow out of, you know, nothing, just strip away all that stuff and, you know, the menace of the jungle and this unbeatable war sort of feel. But I don't know about this Vietnam stuff. I was just reading about it. I was wondering if you knew anything. No, I, I must admit I haven't. Yeah, I really haven't thought into it. But I mean... The, it, I mean, it's all the tactics of the jungle are played out. Yeah. Um, a lot of ambushes in this. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but apart from that, no, I, I really haven't thought into it yeah. um, that far ahead. Except for the idea that, you know, they're all expendable. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And they're all just sort of caricatures as well at the beginning, you know. And I love that scene you mentioned where it's Dylan you son of a bitch and there's just close ups of biceps as they shake hands and lock fists <laughs> somebody said you were the best Dylan you son of a bitch Gosh. Arnie's overacting it's so immediate <laughs> so man and the accent his accent how did he ever I get know. into film <laughs> it's fantastic it's, what is this fucking die business it's just uh, it, it's just um there is something charismatic about him. Oh, he's so um, good looking as well. I gotta say. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, he's a really good looking man. I guess he is very asym. He's very symmetric. <laughs> but yeah, he, but like, I, I think there is something. I don't know. There's, there, there is a, there is something to the uniqueness to to him as a as an actor um, that makes him so memorable. But I really haven't gone into thinking too deeply on that either yeah and there's dudes are all just bodybuilders <laughs> it's crazy <Yeah. laughs> they're all massive guys with mustaches yeah I, I thought it was hilarious watching jesse ventura get out of a chopper <laughs> in an mtv t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> well, this is he was the guy with the spitting tobacco right yeah yeah, yeah. and there's yeah. all the, the pussy jokes and collecting zippos cigar smoke yeah the testosterone levels in the cinema just must have been out off the charts. <laughs> well, that, yeah, I, I would have been interested to see um, like the mixture of audience that might have gone to this film and how they walked out of it. Mm. But um, in terms of how this film starts, uh, it really gets off to a quick start straight away. Mm. A lot of movies like this in the past sort of have a pre-mission mission yeah. to introduce the characters. Uh, and, you know, their skills and show that they're all really badass and all of that type of stuff. But this just goes straight into it. The helicopter lands. Uh, he gets the mission briefing. They're reintroduced to Dylan. You've got the general with the mustache. Like, it's a ubiquitous mustache for a general <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Um, they all look the same, too. They're all kind of slightly wiry uh, old dudes. Um <laughs> Who are much shorter than uh, than the main stars, but yeah, and then they get straight onto the helicopter, and that's where the character development starts to get built. With uh, you get the vibe of the music playing, you know that Vietnam Little Richard classic song. Yeah. stuff, yeah, and uh, and they're all making the jokes as you're saying. Yeah, it's a character development through sexual innuendo, prejudice, and saliva. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and that's where you are introduced to the other characters, um, Mac, who is the... Um, blacker than black guy. 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> Blaine, who is the <laughs> who is who is Jesse the Body Ventura. So you know, and he has his his quote, which I wish to apologize. Uh, no, I won't say it. As much as I, I just love the quote so bad because it is so terrible. <laughs> um, I won't do it. But um, this stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus, <laughs> just like me. <laughs> nice. Uh, but um, and Poncho and, and, and yeah, Poncho and who and doesn't Billy. say anything. Well, the, uh, I actually, when I was writing down notes for this, it was Mac Blaine Poncho plus two other white guys, <laughs> <laughs> and one of them's the director of the next one, <laughs> Hawkins. <laughs> yeah. So, um, man, they've always got to have a Hawkins as well, don't they? <laughs> but uh, yeah, one, one white guy has glasses, the other white guy doesn't. But man, when they landed that jungle, like the tribal um, sort of drums that the music takes, that was so great. I felt. Yeah, it was more. It was a. It was a mood-inducing sound rather than um, actual music, wasn't it? Yeah, this rhythmic sort of tribal sounding, and the tension was so real in the jungle once they land and. Oh my God, when the corpses, you see them and it's red against the green, it's really shocking. <laughs> I was sort of getting comfortable with the characters and I thought there'd be a bit more of that, but not. <laughs> it's like... Straight into yeah, it. Straight yeah, straight into it. And you find out Jim Hopper died. Um, Harper. <laughs> <laughs> Harper from the chopper. Really? Now let's get the hostages. <laughs> I can't do it so well. <laughs> I think it has something to do with the back of your throat. I think Hostages, when you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Hostages. But almost immediately so, you see the thermal vision at that point. Yeah. That's where it's that's where it starts. So that's when you first start getting introduced to the predator. Yeah. It's interesting when you when you watching it again, I, I see that the way that they introduce the predator is very slow over throughout the entire film. So it starts with just the vision. And then at some point you actually see its hand with its own vision. Yeah, yeah. And then it, and then it's a an invisible force, and then you do see this blurry image of it. It's very and slow reveal. Goes, it's, it's very cool. Yeah, which is why I called it a slow strip tease because literally by the end of it, it sheds all its gear and takes its helmet <laughs> off, and you can see it in all its glory. <laughs> oh my gosh! I should have started gyrating <laughs> in front of Arnie. <laughs> You can't have this booty. You can't have this booty. <laughs> well, I mean, I, right at the end, I was Schwarzenegger is on his back and it's standing over him. <laughs> do it. He's yelling, do it. Do it, come on. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> but when, when Arnie's, uh, you know, he gets onto the petrol cart. Oh, man. And the guy goes, it's showtime, kid. And he's got a grenade launcher. Oh, my gosh. It was so 80s and so real, man. The explosions. It's just like... Pure awesomeness. <laughs> when... But it, they, but they did it so well too because everything up until that point was the building of tension. Yeah. So they're tripping through the jungle. They're introduced to these bodies. Um, there's just some slight comments and Mac stopping. Uh, D- Dylan makes a noise and he, and he goes up. Um, Mac goes up to him. You ghost in us, motherfucker. <laughs> I don't care who you are back in the world. I bleed you real quiet. Leave you here. He was, he's given such great lines, <laughs> Mac. <He does>. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that ambush, that scene was so violent. I can see why you may have liked this. People were burning alive. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you love that stuff. What is, it with, what is it with you? And anytime someone is burning alive, you're pointing it out to me. <laughs> I remember your hand. You used to do it with your hand. People running and burning alive. <laughs> I must have left a real impression on you when I did that. <laughs> but the sets were cool. I thought that whole, the huts, yeah. and, you know, when they're shooting up everyone. Well, I was wondering with that, like, their mission is to save the hostages. And they've seen one hostage get shot. Yeah. And from that point on, they are blowing up absolutely everything. They're, like, they, <laughs> they shoot a grenade into a hut. I haven't looked in the hut. It explodes. <laughs> no, there might well be hostages living that's in right. that, you know. Oh, God. Uh, there's so many. And that's when the catchphrases come quick and fast, you know. Stick around. Oh, stick around. Knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, Arnie, man. Even though I love him, I needed subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, get con up on the hook. And even the actor Hawkins looks confused. He's like, uh, <laughs> you got it, Major. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But the thing is, really, you don't need to follow the plot at yeah. all because it, it all plays out through their testosterone, Arnie's overacting and, you know. Well, I gather Dylan betrayed Dutch there uh, through extreme close-ups. <laughs> <laughs> well, essentially what it was is they were supposed to be on a rescue mission, but it was a CIA operation. Uh-huh. But it really... The thing was is that it was also a rescue mission that didn't turn out because they were trying to get men back. Mm. But um, it was mainly a CIA operation of, you know, knocking out this camp and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so I just love the stuff that happens with the Predator after where it's in first person and we become the Predator, you know? Yeah. You hear the clicking sound and reverb, but it's right in your ears. Very creepy and so cool. And then, like you say, you see the hand and the claws and you know that it's not of this world. And the camouflage looks like incredible, like for 1987. Really cool effects, I, I felt. Yeah. And, and what I like in this is that when you do see, whether it's seeing it through his vision um, or the camouflage, uh, even if you don't see it, it does appear in the screen. So it sometimes it'll show a picture and it's not telling you that it's there. But if you look, you will actually see it. Ah. Oh. It's not a... I don't think it's in all of them, but there are ones where you can actually see the Predator. Yeah, well, I wrote that down later on, but yeah, there were, I watched it a couple of times and I just thought, oh, it sort of plays tricks on you, whether or not you thought you saw it. And you just it sort of, yeah, it gets you sort of paranoid <laughs> thinking that, oh, where is it? And you're sort of scanning the screen, trying to look for yeah, it. Yeah, and... yeah. Uh, but also, once it once the tables get turned and uh, and uh, Dutch is in his own camouflage, you can actually see him if you look hard enough through its vision. Oh yeah! Wow! Cool! Cool! Mm. So I guess that brings about Act Two. Something is coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Um, well, mine was the hunters become the hunted, which oh, was yeah. an obvious title, but it leads on from the original hunters quote yeah and it starts with this really cool shot up the trees where this blood is dripping down (laughs) it's really long shot but then there's hawkins body at the top oh my god yeah so they start getting picked off at that point so they're they're trying to make their way back to the chopper and um they've got their own hostage now a lady from the The camp the one woman yeah yeah. And then when Mac sees the the thing take out Blaine, he just starts shooting, and then everyone starts shooting. Yeah, that's the- awesome, isn't it? And he grabs <laughs> he grabs the Gatling gun, and they just destroy an entire forest. <laughs> oh my god! And Arnie looks so cool. His eyes are all steeled, and then he lets out a full magazine, reloads without blinking, lets out another. <laughs> <laughs> well, there actually aren't that many people who can fire uh, a gun and not blink. <laughs> yeah, it was cool man he looks so tough <laughs> yeah and i just love that you know the bit where the gatling gun he's just still shooting and there's no bullets left and you just yeah. hear the sound of the um whirring sound yeah oh my gosh but uh, mac has these weird shriveled ears i noticed did you notice that <laughs> no <laughs> 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 and the music when Billy's Oh, it was Billy who died, sorry Where Billy, Mac was saying goodbye to Billy Goodbye, bro Oh, it The Blaine. music starts with a trumpet Oh, it was Blaine, Yeah, sorry. yeah, uh, that's it The trumpet, that was a bit over the top But then I realised, oh, it's not just the music It's the whole scene <laughs> <laughs> So over the top, man The bro yeah. love <laughs> Well, I mean, um, yeah, he, he uh... Goodbye, bro <laughs> And that comes in every now and then, you know, it's just, it's just like the, <laughs> the moving yeah. part of the film. But yeah, it's very, it's very hammy when that uh, friend Sean kicks in. I love the Predator's gadgets though, when you see him bleeding and he's stitching himself up and he's got all these, you know, these array of gadgets. That was kind of cool. Yeah. And that's another slow reveal as well, where you still don't see the full body. Yeah. And then you see it for a glimpse as it screams when it applies some of the medical stuff to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's when they decide that they're going to set a trap for it. Yeah. If it bleeds, we can kill it. And then accuse yeah, the... Yeah, you beat me to... Accuse the montage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are a few montages in this, aren't there? Yeah. Of things getting set up. And like they're setting up their traps. And it's just shirtless men pulling on ropes. <laughs> <laughs> They're all sweaty and all flexing. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and interspersed, there's always there's always sort of like a little character moment in within each montage. Oh yeah, that's where they refer to their backstory in short little bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This um Boy Scout bullshit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it made me think of camping. Was your trip anything like this? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> camping yeah. trip. Yeah. I had to knock down a tree and raise a few logs. <laughs> you ripped off your shirt, the, got all sweaty. The tarp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I forgot that we had the tent in the car. <laughs> Which just basically wrecks itself. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it just, I, I'd torn up plants and chopped down trees and. There's a public camping site too. But then there's Mac in the inky blackness and you can really all only just see his eyes as he <laughs> draws Dylan in close and he's like, shh. That's right. So what happens is um, nothing, they're, they're all set up and nothing's happening. And uh, Dylan goes to um, to Dutch, what are you going to do now? I get some cheese. And, uh, and Dutch decides that he's going to be the cheese. Mm. So Dutch walks out into the middle of the clearing to see if he can draw in the predator, and he yeah, does. Yeah, worked. And um, things don't go too well at that point. It falls out of the trap, and and uh, Dylan and Mac go chasing after it. Yeah. And that's when it's about the those guys. It's their time to shine and <laughs> and to burn. And that's when we see the three dots. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Bet poor Mac, his head exploded. Yeah, you get to see it in all its glory too. Oh. So and then it's Dylan's turn, and uh, that's where he gets his arm shot off. Yeah. And that's a that's a fantastic scene. It's like a quick draw. That scene where the arm's actually falling to the ground and it's still, still shooting, shooting the gun. Yeah, crazy. Locked in on the thing. That's pretty awesome. He switches over to his other good arm, but yeah, doesn't make it. Yeah, poor Apollo. <laughs> Apollo <laughs> and his immaculate moustache. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It was all the the mustaches were in. You know, they're, they're really in. But um, did you know that he became governor of Minnesota in 1998? No, and Arnie was governor of California in uh, 2003. So. Wow! Like so, so he really, so he really was the first governor. It's, it's teams of uh, it's teams of predator governors, man. <laughs> Have you looked into any of the other ones? I think they ran, but they didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> they even ran for Senate, wow. apparently, but didn't make it. Oh, gosh. Wow. Oh, well, they would have done a, still a better job than, than some of the other candidates, I'd imagine. Yeah, but they start dropping off at this point. Billy's making a stand as well, and he's a knife, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he, he just, um, yeah, he goes mad and just decides to, uh, to, to stay on the log. Yeah. To face it down, yeah, that knife is huge. Uh, that's a knife, knife. You you literally have taken some of the same notes as I. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's get to the chopper, I guess. Yeah, go, get to the chopper. And then Act Three, I suppose. Yeah, well, um, before we get to Act Three, um, all hell breaks loose. The other guy gets shot in the head. Anna goes off. Anna's the um the one woman. And um, Arnold Schwarzenegger gets chased off a waterfall, and I I felt a bit of deliverance action going on there. <laughs> what, what did you? I love how when he falls, he's like, oh shit! <laughs> it's classic Arnie, man. Classic Arnie. Yeah, and the slow mo. But that fall, fall in first person, yeah, slow mo, man. I watched yeah, it a couple awesome. times. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, did you did you get any deliverance vibes from that? <laughs> I did a little bit, especially <laughs> when they start pulling out the bow and arrow. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I can't look at a waterfall in a rainforest the same way again, or a jungle, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's just a, any type of waterfall in a river. And of course, the, when the predator follows him, the suit's not waterproof. Of course, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was that the it damage. The, uh, I don't think it was damage necessarily because. Um, you see it working again later. Mm. I think it's something to do with water disrupts it. Yeah. But um, that's when we get to see finally um, Schwarzenegger gets a, an advantage where he's running away. And as a result, he gets all muddied up, all lubed. Yeah. And uh, and um, he realizes he doesn't have his weapon, so he just hides. And the predator doesn't see him. Yeah, the alien's weakness. He can't see heat with the mud. So that's when we get to act three. It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's my, it's my mattress. I'm a cop, you idiot. <laughs> I need a vacation. Oh, God. 
<laughs> That's all I had. I thought I did it bad. <laughs> you play. So basically, there's so many catchphrases in this film that you can use, but you're using catchphrases from other films. <laughs> what was your title? Um, the hunter who was the hunted becomes the hunter who then becomes the hunted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very Inception. There's such a caveman hunter montage in this as well. Yeah. Where, you know, he's, you get, to, there's so much of the rippling muscles pulling up ropes and logs and making <laughs> things. It's so... The traps are designed so Arnie can flex more, I believe. <laughs> I believe so, yeah. Like, he literally would flex if he was just tying a rope. You know, like a piece of string would require full body work. Oh, that's one funny thing I read, actually. In this film, people, the cast would wake up at as early as 3 a.m. just to work out and then pretend that they hadn't. <laughs> just go <laughs> to each other, oh, I was born naturally like this. But they're all waking up early working out. <laughs> In secret. <laughs> Like just to have a conversation with a Schwarzenegger. <laughs> no, just to be just to be more butch. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably from listening to Schwarzenegger going, "Have you ever tried bumping? <laughs> bumping? bumping. Every day I'm bumping, it's like I'm coming. It's like I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh God." <laughs> I'm coming here, I'm coming there. But I felt when the predator ripped out the spine and the skull, yeah. that was really brutal. <laughs> yeah, that I wasn't was expecting pretty awesome. that. Well, no, that that when I was young, that was the scary part, you know. I, I couldn't watch that. Oh yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um and it was pretty well done too, the way that, that they did it. Very realistic. <laughs> yeah. The effects were great, hey. Making the trophies. It was sort of a predator's guide to how to make trophies. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that bow that he makes is freaking awesome. Yeah, it was a step up from Deliverance, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> Made it himself. <laughs> and he's got some lungs on him too. He's like a Pavarotti. Well, can, uh, yeah. Just the, the screams of, of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Baritone. <laughs> Fueled by <laughs> schnapps. <laughs> yeah, yeah if, he'd, if he'd quoted some opera, that would have been pretty awesome. <laughs> But um, when, yeah, he puts on the mod again and, yeah, the Predator's gadgets fail. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a back and forward. So the Predator can't spot him and he's getting a few traps off. So he gets some explosive arrows on him and um, spears and then he starts to tra hunt the Predator. And then when he goes into a cave, he realizes that the Predator has tricked him and then the Predator becomes the hunter and then Arnie escapes from that and falls into the water and i love that scene where he's just sort of crawled out of the water and this knife goes straight over his head yeah the two and just locks in there. wolverine hey those things yeah that was pretty awesome and um that's when the uh the predator picks him up and you see his real height yeah he's massive he's huge yeah and he looks at his skull and he's very attracted to that skull yeah you know so so you are right he's very attractive on many levels <laughs> Um, yeah, and he and uh, he decides he's going to um, go full caveman. They're both going to just um, mano or preto. Yeah, he takes off and, the mask um, and you're one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and but before that, slightly there was the predator triangle slides, and I remember playing AVP at your place. Yeah, man, that was a cool game. Do you remember that? That game? was a cool game. Graphics. These days, the graphics don't sit up, but at the time, they were pretty awesome. They were awesome at the time. I was, I loved that game. I never really got into Predator though, because I hadn't seen the thing. But it all makes sense now. And yeah. I would just wonder how much money we've thrown into graphics cards over the years <laughs> that are pretty much worthless now. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. New games, new graphics card. Yeah. You know, you're not really buying a game. You're buying an entire way of life <laughs> for a very short period. They're like the mobile phones of <laughs> the PC. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and then you go into full Predator Vision, which is like blind. <laughs> it's just red, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, that was one thing that I just could never kind of reconcile myself to was... How the hell the predator manages to see? Yeah, it's just like a, a really evolved mollusk. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like it's it's doing all kinds of crazy parkour shit, and yet it um. It's basically a crustacean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that's when um. So there's a bit of back and forth, and finally, uh, you know, the predator punches the crap out of him. Mm-hmm. And Arnie's only last resort is to to lead it to a trap. Yeah. And that's when you get the classic line, you know, come on, do it. Do it now. now. Kill me, I'm here. Kill me, I'm here. Yeah. Come on. What are you doing? What are you waiting for? Come on, kill me. Yeah. Kill me now. You can do that. Kill me, <laughs> kill me now. <laughs> you can do that well. <laughs> Gasp. And it doesn't fall for it. And it comes around. And I love Arnie's expression at that point where... Where yeah, he pulls over the log. Well, where he looks up at the predator and the predator's looking down at him and it's just like, um, oh, fuck. Yeah. And yeah, he kicks the thing and the log falls down. The counterweight falls down on it. Yeah, but um, I don't know. The only note I had for that section was, gosh, that laugh was awful, man. <laughs> the predator's <laughs> laugh. I've just got... My note just is... <laughs> It took it was, you out of the moment for a little. It did a little bit. You, you know what it made me think of? It made me think of a Thriller from Michael Jackson. <laughs> it was, oh, that's why the face was all messed up. It's a plastic what? surgery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, you know the bit at the end where um, in Thriller where Vincent yeah, Price do does the laugh? Yeah, it's very yeah. similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's where you get the self-destruct button again. Yeah, and uh, he realizes what's going on, and he gets to that Japa. Well, he was given the countdown supposedly because he was a formidable opponent, or as he could have triggered it instantaneously. Apparently. Oh, where did you hear that? Oh, I read that somewhere. All oh, right, it was written by a fanboy, yeah. huh? One of the trivia bits. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That makes sense. But I like the, how the film ends with all the cast looking to camera. It sort of brings yeah, back. <laughs> yeah, it's signing out each camera. And I like yeah. how, how some of them are really badly done as well. <laughs> it's almost like they're giving a thumbs up to the camera. You know, like the, one of the guys yeah. catches the, the gun and then smiles at the camera. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, we're live yeah. in, a, in, a, in another world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked it. But yeah, did you have any final thoughts? Basically, um, he finally got to the chopper. <laughs> really was the, the main thing. Yeah. Um, and there was, of course, the final French horn time. <laughs> you know, where yeah. it kicks in. And, and Arnie's looking pretty beat in the chopper as it, as it um, flies off into the sunset. Yeah, poor Dutch. Uh, but I don't know what's going to happen to Anna then. Because she was a hostage. She was on the bad guy's team. Yeah, so I know. So what's going to happen to her? Probably go to jail for 12 months. <laughs> or, or get Stop tortured by films. the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> goes to jail. I only just put that uh, one together. Yeah, I get to. Uh, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Um, but what about you? So how would you describe this? You know, because Oh, it's really a classic it? worth revisiting. I can't believe I haven't actually watched it. I, like you, I've... I've been exposed to this film but i haven't watched it entirely so it's definitely of that era the 80s man it's just very masculine and macho and a lot of this stuff wouldn't fly these days i think um and you can see this in the remake like there's more leading actresses in the remake there's olivia Mann and yvonne stravinsky well what 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 is it about it that you would say wouldn't fly now oh just just the amount of masculinity <laughs> just this pure man no oh women. right okay but um yeah but it's action and escapism, you know, and the pyrotechnic eye candy. And it sort of harks back to the monster film era too, in some ways, I felt, with really nice suspense. So I I enjoyed it. And thanks for recommending this one. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, it was an inevitability, you know, to have to go and visit Predator at some stage. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that I did. It was great to watch it again. How would it rate on your nostalgia meter? This is, this is one of the top. Um, I'm going to give it 11. <laughs> I realized recently that there is actually a movie that if 11 was the maximum, I'd have to create a new maximum for it to reach. Oh. But because I've given other ones 11, this one has to go to 11. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> um, but because there's only like one or two movies that would go beyond Predator. 
Oh, are they yet um, to come? Okay, wow. Yeah, well, I think you could guess which ones it is. It's sort of the real mainstream ones. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but yeah, it's not the Smurfs. So, <laughs> well, what's wrong with the Smurfs, Derek? <laughs> you said you didn't like them. It was the cartoon cartoon movie of the Smurfs. How did you know that? <laughs> I love you the know, Smurfs. You know the one where Gargamel uh, marries. Um, <laughs> The female Smurf? Smurfette. But he created it. Smurfette, her. yeah. It would be like, no, it wouldn't work. Why do you why do you think he created her? <laughs> the males were accidents. That's why he tried to destroy the village. <laughs> um yeah, great nostalgia meter, great rewatchability. Would you rate this as a B grade film? No, this was um yeah. actually very successful at the box office. It only like it only missed out to like a few of the the better ones. Like it was top five, I think. So it's quite big budget. The Arnie stuff, like he was a powerhouse man. And if you look at the poster, Schwarzenegger's before the title. <laughs> it's yeah. just as big as Predator <laughs> on the on the poster. You literally <laughs> could misinterpret the title of this film it's looking just at the poster. Yeah. <laughs> his actually first name is Schwarzenegger, and his last name is yeah. Predator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It actually looks like the title of something that would be on Netflix now in one of those true crime documentaries. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Schwarzenegger, Predator. <laughs> and his victims. But yeah, thanks thanks for watching this uh, and uh, commenting on it. It's uh, it's great to relive it and uh, talk it through. Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm hoping my brother, uh, it's uh, satisfactory enough for my brother. Yeah. Uh, for our biggest fan. I look forward to his comments. <laughs> yeah. But listen, um, I'd also like to put a shout out there to all our new listeners uh, who have recently chimed in. And thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you'd like to get in contact with us and let us know about your own personal mogs, that'd be really cool. We are always happy to hear from listeners. Yeah, you can reach us on www.themog.com.au or just search for The Mog in the usual places, Facebook, um, iTunes, it would be great. Thanks so much to everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, Derek, is there any uh, closing comments that you'd like to say? Well, our next film, it's a film uh, from a guest. It's a guest mog from Dara F. Murray, Bloodsport from 1988. <laughs> We're really getting into the macho world now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks very much, Derek. Thanks again. Insert catchphrase here. <laughs> I'm stepping.